Hello. About a month ago, I shot a video entitled Dogs Savage Curry Kale. This is a gardening who done it. And I uploaded that video onto YouTube on my channel. And they asked you a question. Who do you think savaged the curly kale? At the time, we had three dogs staying with us. Um, and those are the dogs. We had Tess. We had Dotty. We had Fern. And we also had our own dog Molly. All the dogs were in the garden when I shot that video and later discovered that the curly kale had been savaged. The evidence was circumstantial, we didn't say who had done it, but I recall asking subscribers at the time if they wanted to hazard a guess, if they would decide who they thought was most likely to be the culprit. Now only yesterday I shot a video where I go into the garden to take a leak. We have the dogs staying with us again for a few days. They were all in the garden with me. And so when I took that leak, the dogs were behind me um, out of sight, out of my sight, um, and something occurred that I didn't actually see until I downloaded the video. Um, I think we have the answer. I think we might, in this video, determine who took the curly kill. I've tried to erect barricades using blue mushroom, spent mushroom uh, crates to keep the dogs away from the raised beds and all the pots and bags are behind those barriers. However, one of the dogs found a way through, returning with the evidence in its mouth. So if you watch the video closely, You'll see a dog bring some curly kale into the shot. I think that may be our culprit. So, enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. Revisit the original video. There's quite a number of you um, decided which dog you thought was likely to be the culprit. You may have got it right, you may not. Enjoy the video. Hello. Time to take a leak. And these are the leaks we're going to be taking. We're just going to take one. And we're going to take one because it's going to seed. But before we do that, uh, I just want to recap on how we've got to where we are and why we're doing what we're doing. Because I have some new subscribers now and visitors are often asking questions that I've answered in previous videos. But I'll quickly do it again and then we'll fire on with uh, 
taking this leak. Okay. So we're growing in a 10 inch pot as you can see. And we're growing four leeks and we've got them in these pop bottles and we've got some felt inserts in the pop bottles. Okay. Um, we planted these leeks on the 1st of June. Uh, these were leeks that had been started off indoors, grown on, and then they were put into this pot on the 1st of June with compost that had just produced some early potatoes. So we reinvigorated the compost with blood fish and bone, banged it straight back in the pot, planted four leeks, put the, uh, the plastic pot bottles around them, and away they went. Okay, now then, the reason why we're doing this. Um, if you've grown these guys in an allotment, um, you would dibber a hole and you would drop the plant in the hole and the bottom of the root, the bottom of the root ball would be probably five or six inches in the ground. But because this pot is only ten inches deep, I can't do that otherwise I wouldn't get much white shank on the leak. If I was to dibber holes in this pot five or six inches deep, the bottom of the leak would be nearly at the bottom of the pot and then, therefore there'd be no um, compost below the root for it to grow into and to develop. Most of the compost would be above the root. So I've actually sown these guys um, close to the top of the pot. In fact these guys are probably only in uh, an inch or two inches at most. Now because of that um, they can become very unstable in the wind. The, 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 they're not in the ground far enough um, and if we put them in a pot and then stand them on the patio then we expose them to the wind don't we? Um, they're there to be blown over and they would be so we need to support them so what I do initially is I put these pop bottles around them now what we'll do is we'll take these um, felt inserts out just pop those over there uh, and take this one out Now normally I would take these leaks four at a time, so I would just uh, empty them the pot out. I'd, I'd cut the lot out of the pot. Um, but I'm only taking one today, and I'm taking this biggest one because it's gone to seed. Okay. And I think if you have a look, you can see the um, the seed head, the stem starting to come um, from the middle of the plant. Did you see it? Can you see it? Okay. So this one's going to seed. I know it's going to seed. There's the seed head starting to come now. And this actually starts right at the base of the leak and grows right through the body of the leak. Okay, so we started off by putting these on, these uh, plastic windbreaks. They support the leak, stop it blowing over, um, and let it and I let them grow until they, they're actually above the top of the windbreak. Now then, because they're not in the ground, this shank would not be white. The reason leaks blanch, the reason you get a white blanch on a leak, is because that is usually below ground level. You exclude the light from it. Now growing it on top, we're not excluding the light from it, so it would normally grow green. So the only way we can get a white shank is to um, mask the light by putting some sort of insert in there to make it dark in there. The leak can grow above the darkness, uh, but in the darkness uh, the shank goes white. Okay, so we're looking to probably get a leak out of this pot with 9 or 10 inches of white on it, even though we're only growing in the pot about an inch. Right, now this could be easy, or it could be, oh rocket sticks by the way. This could be easy or it could be a disaster. As I've said, I normally take four at once, but I'm going to try and just take that one because it's gone to seed. And then what we'll do is I think we'll split it open and just see if we can see that seed stem going down the middle of the leak. What do you reckon? Should we do that? Um, I'll put this back on off camera, by the way, because it's a bit fiddly um, with all these big leaves. But we'll get there, won't we? 
Okay, there's our four leaks. This is the one that's gone to seed. I'm hoping that because it isn't sown too deeply, as I've already said, I can get this out simply by doing this. And this is without cutting the base of the leak, hopefully. Oh, we've got the three dogs with us today. We've got we've got with dogs sitting, so you might see them wandering about on the back of this. That's, that's Tess just went behind me. I don't know if she's on camera. Whoa, that's it. So I hope this is on camera. If you have a look at this, there's the top of the soil ball. Okay, now let's see how far down that leak is. That's how far down it is, look. Just more than my thumbnail so that was in about half an inch to an inch now that's never going to support itself unless you put something like this around but if you're growing in an allotment you dip it in them in you put in them six five six four i don't know inches in the ground they're not going to blow over you don't need these but i like to use these to support these guys because they're not that far in and then we use the um we use the inserts to make it dark in there okay how's that doesn't look a bad leak, does it? Apart from the fact it's gone to seed. Right. Okay, so this is the leak that we've just uh, taken from the pot. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to top and tail it, clean it up, then we'll measure it, see just how much white we get in there, and then I think we'll split it open uh, and see how far it's gone to seed. Uh, see if it's a usable leak at all. Sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you can't. But we'll just uh, top it first and then we'll tail it. I think if you have, have a look down the end of there, I'm not too sure how you get in this, but that's where the uh, the stem would come up, right up the middle of the leak, see it? The white, small white round ring that's where the stem would come up um, and have a seed head on top of it ultimately but we've taken this out early we've recognized it was going to seed and um, we're going to see if we can get some uh, to go in the pot we might we might not okay now let's tail it okay just take a couple of these uh, flags off. How white is that? Hoo -hoo. How white is that? I remember there was only what was it in an inch of that under the compost, and yet look at all that white. And that's because we've used the felt uh, to blanch it up to make it dark inside the uh, pop bottles. Right. Anyway, let's take another off, why not? Uh, how much white is that? Should we measure it? Yeah, let's measure it. We've got the tape here. How's that? Well, I'm going for 10 inch. What do you think? 10 inch. I'm not too sure how you're getting this. But it looks like 10 inch to me. Okay, let's split it. Let's see what we've got in uh, running down the middle of this lake. There we go. This is the guy that was going to support that seed head. Now we let it run. Now I don't think we'll be eating that, but I think we might be able to make some use of that. Okay, I think if we uh, chop that up nice and fine uh, and cook it, it'd be a nice piece of leek. Same on this side. It's the other half of the, uh, the stem that would have produced the seed head.
Okay, so we don't want that, but we want this. Um, okay, so I hope this, uh, I hope this video has been a wee bit informative. I hope you're doing better than I'm doing with with things going to seed. I've had carrots go to seed this year. And I've had a disaster with red skin onions going to seed. This is the first leak that's gone. Let's hope it's the last one. And let's hope uh, you're having a bit better luck than me. Okay. So this is homegrown veg. Signing out.